All right, I'm sure you guys love the shop tours, the hangar tours as much as I do. So I figured while I'm still here in Lone Oak, Arkansas, we're gonna go through uh, Robbie's hangar and shop and, and just show you everything that's going on at these different uh, workshops of his. So you got, I think, what, three different shops which all have hangar doors on them. So what is behind door number one? What do you do in this hangar? This is actually Brian's shop with the uh, Central Arkansas Aircraft Repair. I'll we'll do a quick walk through. That's fine. We'll just do a quick walk through. Like we did on the other one, he's got several projects going. Got the J3, he's got, this is not the wings to this, this is another J3, so he's got two J3s. I know that he has a set of Super Cub wings being built. He's got a set of Starduster wings being done. He's got a Whitman W8 back there being full restoration with a full Garmin setup. It's gonna be probably the nicest Whitman out there. Uh, got Mr. Steve Ruff here. He's kind of working along with him on his Stinson 108.3. There's a champ being rebuilt, and uh, he's probably turned away 20, 20 calls this month. All right, let's start off with the J3 first. What's kind of the story behind that? He's building this one for a gentleman out in Nebraska, and he just wants top notch. I mean, that's just, that's the sentence. He told Brian he wants top notch, and he knew where to come. And what year is this one? With a 46, yep. 46 Cub, and what, what are some of the custom work being done? Obviously fabric and paint. Air tech. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's kind of wanting it kind of the original type. You know, it's got a 65 horse and, uh, you know. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself again to it. Yeah, uh, I'm Brian, uh, owner of Central Arkansas Aircraft. Uh, yeah, this J3 is, is going to be pretty period correct. Uh, he wanted everything other than the floorboards that are in it, which we've done in the last J3 that I did. Uh, he wanted those, but you know we're using period correct hardware, slot headed screws. It's got a, it's a 65 horse. Uh, you know the stripes are laid out according to Clyde's drawing, so it's it's going to be pure cub. He's he wants it that wants it done that way. So other than, other than the floorboards, no other custom modifications or anything. Wait wait, let me turn the camera on first if you're going to hug. Yeah oh yeah no it ain't happening. <laughs> All right, so what about the uh, the Stinson going on the Stinson project? Um, Friend of ours, Mr. Steve Rupp, I'll let him introduce himself and what he's got going. This is pretty neat setup here. So this is an ongoing project of about uh, 16 years. And um, it just taking a Stinson 1948-1083 and kind of playing it forward and bringing up all the, uh, the things that you would have done had Stinson stayed in production. So it's a modern classic. Right, so it's got enhanced seat belts. It's going to have a glass panel. It's going to have a, 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 a autopilot. So it's got all kinds of an electronic ignition, and the, the Franklin engine was replaced by that IL390 back there. So what are we uncovering in this box? Obviously, it's a Lycoming. It's a Lycoming uh, IL390. It weighs six pounds less than the Franklin it replaced. And wow. instead of 165 horsepower, it's got 210. Okay. And then we've got a uh, electro air electronic ignition that goes with this as well. All right, give me a mic check. Huh? All right, so next up in the shop, what's, uh, looks like a Whitman? Yes, I, uh, Whitman W8, uh, it's, a, it's an Arkansas airplane. Uh, it's getting uh, completely restored. Uh, the gentleman that's doing it, him and his wife, uh, it was her dad's airplane. It was built in 1969, and they're having it completely restored. And it's getting a Garmin G3 panel. Uh, 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 Don Wade at, at Don's Dream Machine down at CMD, they did the engine, brand new 0200, uh, Caddo prop. So, you know, it's getting a lot of modern stuff. Uh, I spent better part of a year welding on the fuselage, uh, redoing the seat pans, you know, just making some changes from the original build to make it better. 
Uh, we had a new fuel tank built. All right, this is behind door number two, which is means uh, hangar number two next to the house. This seems to be more of like your playroom, right? What, what all do you do? Right, well. Is this like at midnight you walk out from the house and like, I'm gonna go tinker for five minutes? Not at my age now. I used to work out real late and do stuff, but it's just like I run out of steam at the end of the day. Uh, doing air tech and cutting tapes and stuff, seems like I just don't get the personal time anymore. But as of now, I've got a J3 that I kind of came across, I don't know, it seemed like you wake up one day and by dinner you didn't know you was going to be driving to Texas with a trailer to get a project, but... Uh, Is that where this one came from? Yes, well, combination, uh, Billy Dawson had it in his shop, the guy that owned it was from Michigan, and there is just so many, and, and J3 is one of the best planes built out there, but when you go to Oshkosh, there's five million of them. Uh, I'm going to do this one. If anybody's fooled with the remote control airplanes or knows about SIG, uh, Miss Hazel SIG flew the clip wing, the blue and white one, for years. And I'm copying that scheme, the blue and white. So this, I did the clip wing version. It's a C90-8. And, you know, naturally air tech's going on it. But uh, going to make a little bit of a modern uh, version. I'm just now starting to sand the interior out. Uh, getting ready for paint. Uh, it's going to have carbon fiber floorboards, uh, Acme gear once those are legal or certified, STC, whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to build a, a flying plane, good flying plane, not try to stay to the nostalgic edge of it. I had a boy working next door with Brian that just started covering stuff, so I just let him cover all the tail feathers to it. I called Univair and had some new tail feathers, and I mean, he's He's been covering for about two months and he's pretty well got it down. I mean, he does a really good clean job. So those are ready for primer now. Had some extra exhaust gonna sell, but a neighbor, another buddy of mine is building an Aerolite 103 from the Brian Wallstrom Experimental Aircraft Channel is where he saw it at. Oh, really? <laughs> he had a champ, he's in his 70s. He ended up selling his champ and he just wanted something single seat do away with the medicals and you know and all of that. So this is going to be his corner for a little while. So he's he bought him a brand new, brand new plane. Shipped all the way in from Deland. I wanted to put yep. one of these together. Yeah, they're they're a good uh, good value, ultra, true ultralight, and to have control surfaces like uh, any certified aircraft. So it's a good choice. And I see he, he chose a really bright uh, <laughs> colors as well to wrap it with. Huh? Well, I, I think he had trouble finding one. This one, this one actually come from a dealer up in Michigan or somewhere up north, but it just kind of had to take the color they had. And, and that's good out here. You know, crop duster needs to see you. <laughs> if you're out flying, you need to be chartreuse green and orange, I guess. Yeah, there's, there's Robbie at the controls right there. This is, uh, what year Robbie is this? <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know. 1990s? No, it'd be in the 80s. 1980s Robbie. Flying a Cessna 188. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Aviation Youth Magazine at AviationUSA.com. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, so walking into hangar number three or shop number three, this is where all the completed projects come, huh? Yeah. You might say, I, I have some storage for air tech and stuff, chemicals and stuff that I'd put in here, but this is where I keep my personal plane and Brian, he's got a Cetabria he keeps here. So this is where the Javron lives? Yep. Now, about how long did it take you to build this? 
I tried to keep up with the hours pretty close. I probably got upwards of 800 hours, but you know, I did some weird stuff with painting that took me an extra probably 100 hours. So I, you know, I feel like I can build one in, in six to 700 hours, but this one close to 800. Well, I'd say 800 is still a very quick build. Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've did quite a few super cubs and stuff. So this is double covered and different things that went on that I don't know that took that much longer, but a lot of carbon fiber replacement. It was, I'm, I was not as strict as say Hal is on weight. <laughs> you know, he'll lift something and go, well, I need this to fly. You know, so I, I mean, I do have extended baggage and different things, but I did look at every item. If there's a lighter way to do it, I tried to do it. And refresh my memory on that, which engine did you install on this one? This one's got a Titan 0370. Which puts Standard out about... Standard compression. I, I'm going to guess it's 185 horse, maybe 190. Okay. Yeah, guys, uh, you've seen him at uh, all, pretty much all the stole events, right, Robbie? When I, when I can get loose, I try to go. I try to sponsor them and, and be involved the best I can. The plane's capable, the pilot's just not quite there. <laughs> I don't know if I have just a fright of knowing that I'll have to rebuild this thing if I tear it up, so I don't, I don't try to just get on the ragged edge. And that just, sticker back there, 2021 award. Talk about that for a second. Oh, that way, we had it at our booth last year, and I don't know, I just kind of feel like it's un, I didn't really deserve that. I mean, if, I know how judging's involved with points, I tell everybody this is this thing is blacksmith together. It's not it's not a prim fit and finish plane, but for some reason that teal green that I picked and I kind of played with the color and stuff is real nostalgic, and that's just a hit with everybody. And and we won a a Lindy at Oshkosh with it under I think it was the kit plane or whatever version. That's awesome. So, you know, I mean, I'm 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 happy. You know, it won something, but I wasn't. I didn't sit around and try to just dwell on every little, there's there's so many places that you would run out of SD card, me showing you all the little flaws, so. And you even picked up a, a Best Tugs Tail Dragger Dragger, huh? Yeah, yep, yep, I got that at Sun and Fun about two years ago. They had a little special on them, and I'm getting a little older, and it just makes it nice. All I do is push it straight out and unhook it, and I've got it now to where I can spin it around and that tail wheel will stop about two foot in front of it and <laughs> pull it right back in. All right, and then behind the Javron, you got a beautiful, it looks restored, Satabria here. Yep, this is my cousin Brian's that has the restoration shop. He, uh, I think that this is 20 years old, the Recover. Uh, it's his personal plane. He don't fly it an awful lot, but it, it, it's, it's been around. Uh, it still shines, you know, if it cleaned the bugs and stuff off of it, it'd be hard to tell if it was restored last year or 20 years ago. No, it looks great. It was in, uh, it was in air tech. Uh, everything is still flexible and I just kind of, I kind of watch it. I got another neighbor that's got a champ that was recovered in 1991 and it's still pretty flexible. You know, it's kind of my go-to to see if anything's going wrong. Now, what is uh, Satavria typically powered with? This has got an 0320. It's a GCAA, which is 150 horse, no flaps. This is the next step between this and a KCAB, which would just have inverted fuel and oil. So what's the uh, what's the airframe sitting on the side here? Uh, this is a Champ, a 72 model Champ. Originally, they had a two cylinder on them, but this one's got going to have a. Uh, uh, Continental, probably a 65, but it's one of the ones that's going next door. It's just kind of on the sideline right now. They've already bead blasted everything and used the uh, the epoxy primer from AirTech and got it ready to cover. Or they got to put the wood stringers and get it all ready. But it's just it's stored out here out of the way. What's what's the story on the the tail cone of the Mooney? Oh, James that works for Brian is working on his getting his A and P and he's commercial or he's working on his instrument and everything and he's got that stored out he bought a project and on a Mooney you have to drill them apart to haul them you don't really take the wings off so 
That's the way he brought it home from Texas. He's going to put a motor on it and restore it. It's, it's not a bad looking plane. It's like a 62 model or three or something like that. How did you get started in the aviation side of things? Oh, I grew up around here, probably in these very yards, spent my childhood looking up at ag cats and stuff, crop dusting. We done been hearing them run around here today, but uh, I didn't come from an aviation family as far as uh, I, a lot of my grandpa didn't buy the original J3. You know, I didn't come from that kind of family. I always loved planes. So when I graduated high school, I was farming and I got married and basically want to get my license. It just, it takes this right here. So just saved up, got my license, worked my way through. Next thing you know, I, I'd always flew remote control airplanes and then a gentleman, Kenny Blaylock, over at Conway, Arkansas with Special Product Aviation. He helped me get some logbooks straight on the first J3 I bought. And to me, that's when my flying career, I'm not knocking Cessna 150s. I got my license in a 152, I had about 200 hours. My flying started when I bought a 100 horse J3. That was when I was hooked. And he helped me along and next thing you know, I'm buying projects, he's signing off my work. Next thing you know, here comes this little letter, says you've been helping me long enough, go take your A&P &A test. Started rebuilding planes, got my IA through the years, Brian got his ratings. And um, then Mr. Mack was gonna retire with AirTech, so he offered me AirTech. It's one town over, I've always used, I've used all the other systems too, they're all great systems. It's just because it was a combination of the next town over, that's what I was used to mostly. And I always tell the same joke. I feel like he chose me because he knew that I've screwed up more paint jobs so I'd be able to answer questions. And so that's kind of where I'm at, you know, just in, and then I quit farming a couple of three years ago. My son went on being a lineman for energy and uh, I got family that helps me with air tech. And when did you decide to cut the, uh, the runway in here? How, how long a runway you got? Ooh, I got about 2000 feet. Probably full runway, 2,000 feet. I've had 450 steermans, stuff like that come in, no issue. Uh, I don't just advertise it to, you know, some, it is kind of narrow with the trees and I don't, unless I know someone's capabilities, I don't want them to bear off into something that's a little unnerving, but no, it's, it's about 2,000 feet.